if I figure I'm going to build the best bike I can build, I'm going to bring it out to some of the best places to ride. And that's right. We are here on the West Coast. We're at Mesquite MX in Mesquite, technically Arizona, on the border of, of um, Nevada. So uh, we're out here today. Some friends of ours have got the track rented out for a private ride day. They allowed me to come out and do some testing. And hopefully I'll get some guys to test it also. And we'll see what their thoughts are on my EBT e-bike. So, uh, yeah, got my gear on. Let's get the rest of this helmet and everything on. Let's go spend some laps. We're out here now at Glen Helen. Uh, I'm going to put some riding video. we got some buddies going to record me, and I'll throw it in there but we're testing mainly as you can see just how dirty it is is all the stuff coming off of the bike i've ridden it three times we've got it down to uh 70 75 volts and right now i'm charging it up to see how long it would take i'm going to do like a 30 minute charge on it i've got it on my predator 2000 it will run this electro and code charger so we'll not get it straight to its 30 amps but we're still pushing 17 and a 17.7 amps into the battery as we charge it up and get ready to go out and ride and um, yeah as you can see this mud coming off it's quite muddy here so there's a lot of load on this bike and if you've ridden Glen Helen or you know anything about it it has some huge huge uphill drive drives and the bike has it hiccups pulls them fine we uh changed the tuning with Don, me and Don went through and he tuned it, changed the power ratings, and now uh, it seems to be much better in level in level two. So the way it comes with this controller, that 260 controller, level two seems to be a little on the weak anemic side. But we raised the RPMs up in the unit, raised it up from like 7,000 RPMs all the way up to 84, and that allowed mode two to run a little higher and we increased the amps from 350 amps is how the 260 controller came we bumped it up to a 400 so it made a huge difference on the power and yeah i'm gonna go back out there we're gonna put this 30 minute charge on there and we'll check back in and see exactly where we're at going from 75 amp or 70 75 volts and then where we went where we are in after our 30 minute charge all right set there for 30 minutes anxiously waiting to be able to ride the bike and i put 10 volts back in it so it went from the 75 to the 80 up to almost 85 so almost 10 volts like 9.72 the um, charger the electro and code charger will tell you while it's doing how many amps you actually put in so that's good i, I do like that but um yeah we're going to go out there and ride some more get some more testing done see where we're at here you can see it pulling up the hill. This thing pulls so hard, it's hard to tell because I look like such a slow rider, but I promise you these hills are super steep and it just monsters up the hill. Riding most of the day in level two is just enough. And here we are, still on level two. This is on the main track at Glen Helen. Somebody JT next to me on a 350. Chase is running his helmet cam. He is um, on his 450 and the bike keeps up just fine. We are all close to the same speed of rider. And I'm normally riding a built 250, so the power of this is close. And here we are switching over to riding in the high desert up near Hesperia. Uh, some of the hills up there. What an absolute blast this was. I'm telling you, the reason why I'm having to do a voiceover is because we just didn't stop riding. The bike is so good. Like, I'm contemplating selling my gas bike because of it, but we'll, we'll get into that here in a second. This is just me and Chase. We just take off he's like go that way and we would just go that way and um we rode for the first time out an hour and a half yeah uh, like well, maybe hour 15 minutes i think i had about 10 to 15 percent battery left after that i mean i didn't come back because of the battery i came back because i was tired of you know needed some rest and some water and all that stuff and then we went back out for another hour when i come back after that time i had a uh, little less than half a battery you know i mean so the battery for trail riding especially if you're going to be trail riding in an area where you can get back to your vehicle is is 
totally fine, like way better than I would have expected. So I guess the next thing we need to do besides just sit here and watch this, these beautiful hills, man, I wish the camera didn't flatten it out. You get to see how high and how up and down and how this thing just tracked it up the hills. But let's, let's break this down. And as you saw, we had an absolute blast in California. The trip happened because my son races Supercross, and uh, Anaheim won was last week. He uh, made the night show a good night, had a flat in the LCQ. So, well, I mean, it was a great trip. Nothing to do with him as far as what made it great. What made it great was all the riding and was this monster of a bike. And I got to say monster because I love it. It's not the fastest thing in the world, obviously. and It has its ups and downs and, and we'll definitely go over that the next video will be performance testing this and i've got my Talaria and i've got a new controller for the Talaria and we'll test it against that it's going to blow its doors off we'll probably be putting it up against my um, built 250 and some 450s we'll do some top speed runs uh, and i want to try to get an actual mileage of a battery range test so i'm probably going to go ride some trails uh, my next day's off and we'll get you that so that that's the next video but here's what most people are here for is to find out what did it cost what was it all said and done what did, what do we have into it there are a few things on here i'm going to add this in this does change the price substantially i put this restyle kit on here because i wanted the newer plastics did not have to do it the plastics that were on here were not that bad they were black not the biggest fan but i didn't have to do that but that is one thing i did so Let's go over to the bike, the rolling chassis you saw in episode one. I got that for, I think I said 400 there. I got corrected by one of my buddies. It was 500. He was with me. And uh, my buddy JT was with me when I bought it, and he did correct me. It was $500 I bought for the rolling chassis for what you saw here. The um, Then I got the mounts from Lithium King. That's these flat plates down here. Had to make a few little mods to them because they weren't specifically for this bike. If you're going to do that, get his universal ones. Uh, they, they they look really nice. I think they would work really good. So, yeah, the Lithium King mounts, they were $150. It's a great deal. It shipped them to me. Had them really quick, too, so I was happy with that. Then uh, we had the motor and the controller. The controller in here, which is the, 20, the 260, the big controller, and the motor mount, which is the QS138. I mean, the motor, that's the QS138, and then the battery. So if you were to buy just the motor and controller to do your own battery, trying to save some money, you could get the motor and controller with the tune and everything in it for $1,400. The battery by itself, it winds up being $2,180. This is a 76 volt, 48 amp hour battery. I'm learning these things. If you get them together, you save about 60 or 70 bucks. You can get this from um, Electro & Co. There is a wait on these things because they do not just ship them right out. You'll be a couple of weeks of wait on that. So just giving you heads up there. But it's a $3,550. That's right. $3,550. I did get a charger. I got their 12 amp charger. I have it out in the van. I'll um it, it's 160 bucks. They have a five amp, which is just too it's just too low. They have a 12 amp. And they do also have the lightning charger. I did also buy the lightning charger because so I want to test it. That had nothing to do with this build. It was something else I've been working on there. So we'll do a, a, a comparison between the two chargers and see is that $300 something dollar price tag for the Lightning Charger worth it. But they have their mid range charger. That's what I would recommend. It goes up to 12 amps. And as you saw, the little generator I was running, most of the time the best I could get out of that thing was 16 amps. So um, that's a really good one there. The restyle kit, like I said, was $380 and it come all the way from Spain. So took a little bit to get that. So that brings us to, and I didn't put this on the screen because I just kind of wanted you to, to pay attention here. The Light BX, the Suron Light BX, which, which was my target, MSRP at Luna Cycles. I'm sure you can get them cheaper or more expensive different places, is $4,600. This thing right here, this whole thing with the restyle kit, just like how you saw it, see it, is $4,790. So I busted the budget by 190 bucks. But if you don't count this, I did not, this is not a need. Can you build this for less than a Suron? Absolutely. Is it better than a Suron? 
in my opinion, in almost every way. The Cinderella is a smaller bike. You're running riding in the cities or, you know, mountain bike trails, maybe you would want. But if you're going to actually ride, hmm, I'm yawning, I'm tired. It's been a long, long week out in California. Lots of riding, lots of traveling. Like I said, if you're going to build a real bike, you could do this. The um, I, I, I did not get the video, and I do apologize. Um, a somewhat acquaintance of mine, Andrew Short, uh, the Dirt Bike Riders will know who that is. Kind of a, a friend in a way. He was out at Glen Helen. He rode the bike. And the day before, he rode the um, the, the Stark Varg. And then he rode this the next day. He just happened to be out there when we were out there. He said the start, the bottom end of this is very Stark-esque with this QS motor. But he said that where it starts to run out on top, but the higher RPMs, he said the Stark just keeps going. I don't know what their their um, RPM range is, but they said the Stark just keeps pulling and pulling. He said it's a monster. He said it's too much. He turned it way, way down to be able to ride it. Like I told you, I was riding this thing mainly on two and three. Uh, one is really slow. One is great in the trails, and man, it makes the battery last a long time. So the next video will be a performance test. So please, if you want to see that, what this thing can do, I want to try to get a couple of riders and some fast guys, much faster than me, and see what they can do lap time. What I was thinking about doing is put them on my bike, something they're not used to, my KTM, and then get their lap times, their best lap times on the, a bike they're not used to, and then put them on this, another bike that they're not used to, and see what the lap times are. Of course, on their personal bikes, they're going to be faster because they ride them all the time. But that way, they get a, a comparison of what I'm shooting at for power, 250F, 350-wise, and is, is the power better or worse? And, and I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I can't guarantee it. But I'm definitely going to do some performance numbers and some performance testing. But I... I'm going to call it success. Yes, uh, the Ultra B, which is a lot closer to this bike uh, as far as what you would do with it, trail riding or actually trying to ride moto or whatever with it. They're 6500 bucks. No, I'm so, sorry, I'm yawning. They're $6,500 for those. So that's um, with even with the restyle kit, you're $1,700. $1, uh, cheaper than a Ultra B. And this is so much better of a bike than an Ultra B. You get all the Honda components. You get the ease of getting parts. You get big, robust stuff. And without the restyle kit, it's like $2,000. So, um, yeah. Please subscribe and like. I, I, that stuff does help. It's 2024, and I really want to put as much as I can into this channel. And the way you can tell me that, I, that you like what I'm doing is either comment and, and give it a thumbs up. I, I know it's not much, but it supposedly helps the algorithm. And yeah, I mean, all hell the algorithm.